is up YouTube. So we begin where we left off. You know, that battle. It's pretty much over. Um, one thing I didn't realize, I know a lot of my episodes have been within like 10 minutes. Except my last um, Let's Play Minecraft episode. Um, so the thing is... Um, this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna sound kind of silly. Um, I haven't really posted anything on YouTube for like a while. Um, last time I posted was before YouTube got bought bought out or absorbed, you can say, and that was like when Age of Conan was uh, recently released. I was uh, making some Age of Conan PvP videos, you know, class PvP videos and stuff like that, but. Like, like I said, that was ages ago. And that my, my other account is pretty much gone because I did not, you know, after that, after uh, YouTube got bought out, they uh, <clears throat> forced people to, uh, you can say, how is it, to input a, a Gmail account, I think, or something like that, or, or add your Gmail account, or s some stuff like that, I don't remember. It's been a while, and I didn't want to do it because I was like, you know, why should I add, or why should I connect my Gmail account to my YouTube account, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, time time passed, and, you know, I kind of missed posting videos and, you know, just seeing what people write on my video, the comments, etc., etc., and then, you know, plus it's fun, dude. Um, it's like, you post a PvP video with music and a bunch of heads rolling. If those of you that played Age of Conan would know what I mean by fatalities and stuff. Um, that being said, at that time, you used to be able to put, like, I think 10 minutes max on your YouTube video. And, <clears throat> whatchamacallit, um, so, I've been posting 10 minute videos, because I, I thought that was the max, I don't want to run into issues, having to uh, render the video again, etc, etc. So, I start looking around, you know, just like searching, you know, I, I like watching other player, you know, people play games, and, and I realize, like, oh my god, these guys have like 30 minute videos, hour long videos, and I'm like, well, is it because they are popular? You know, because they they have a lot of subscribers, they have a lot of likes, they have a lot of views. And then I decided to post that Minecraft video with 15 minutes. Um, so that being said, it went through without a problem, without no, no hitches, no nothing. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to try posting this next episode of uh, Mountain Blade with Fire and Sword, uh, about 30 minute episode, and see if I can post it. And, well, here we are. There it is. Anyways, back to game. Um, as you can see, I'm engaging some bandits. Uh, I'm, I'm slowly making progress. Um, so, for all of those that never play this game or want to play this game, you know, that's fairly cheap on Steam if you want to buy it. But, um, the easiest way to start this game, I mean, besides going on easy, um, is what I found was, um, the most profitable is, as soon as you have a little money, you can invest in some um, gunpowder. I think it's called gunpowder. I don't. I can't recall right now. <clears throat> Anyways, if you buy like a barrel of that, and maybe two barrels, in a city, because that's uh, in cities, they'll cost anywhere between two hundred dollars to about three hundred dollars. And you go to any fort, and the minimum you'll get is I think like five hundred dollars, which is you know you make a profit of three hundred dollars. So, what you want to do is, you know, you want to buy a barrel or two, whatever you can afford at start, and just keep, you know, stop by a city, do whatever you have to do, sell some, you know, junk, you know, buy a barrel or two if, they, if they're selling any gunpowder. And then from there, when you go stop by a fort, I mean, I wouldn't even sell it for 500, I would go again for, because I've seen it go for, I've sold some for like 600, 650, 680, I've seen even one for 700 dollars. For something that I bought for two hundred dollars, that's like freaking five hundred dollars profit, dude. 
I mean, of course you want to do that. <clears throat> so I found that that is the easiest way to start collecting money for getting, you know, appropriate gear so you can start kicking butt. Um, I mean, of course you want to kill, um, whatchamacallums, bandits, looters, and just collect that too for to sell but over time you know the the value of those items that you get like from the loot from like bandits and rebels and it, it doesn't become worth the price so like I said you if you want to start off and to um, obtain gear as quickly as possible I would say just start buying stuff Look at and as you ride around, you know, to cities and towns. Don't forget to check like beer prices, vodka prices, because um, some some places it's much cheaper um, to buy it and then sell it to another at another city, and you'll make some profit. But but like I said, first start off with the powder because it's you'll know that's always going to be pricey at certain forts, especially if they're on the. I've noticed that like those forts that are were little castles at the borders between two factions especially the ones that are in conflict they're usually the price goes up I don't know if that's a coincidence or if that's how they have it scripted anyhow yeah I don't know why I'm going with the pole arm here <coughs> you know just testing it out but hey yeah. I'll stick with my saber and my rifle, you know. So anyhow, with that being said, I'm thinking of making some warband episodes as well. You know, just have a few separate games going on at once. <clears throat> you know, maybe release a video of each a week or two videos of each a week and uh, see how it's going and if um, if anyone's interested I, I know I don't have that many viewers or followers or subscribers or whatever right now but if you're watching and you like what you're seeing and you want to see maybe more maybe you're interested in you know Total War Attila you know let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely start you know making those videos if there's any other game you like and if I'm able to do it just let me know in the comment section and I'll maybe start working on that video too so anyhow back to this game I'm trying to see which price is probably well whichever one is the most profitable Speaking also of um, like alcohol, I think beer you can buy for like twenty, forty thalers, and you can sell them to to even village villages in certain places for like a hundred and plus thalers. So that's another profitable thing. <clears throat> um, the other thing is, as of right now, for me it seems like the marksman or the musketeers so pretty much rifle infantry is probably like the strongest in game I mean I, I've seen cavalry is really strong too like uh, um, the armored cavalry with guns and such I mean obviously with the spears with their charge but I realize that if you have a lot of marksmen and that cavalry charge is pretty much usually gets stopped I mean if, if all you have is marksmen or musketeers and they just you put them on a hill and they told them hold this position and you know you can ride with your horse kind of a, uh, ahead and just kind of fire a few shots maybe take out a guy or two and by the time the enemy cavalry gets to <coughs> excuse me to the hill I mean usually a big chunk of them are taken out by all your marksmen if you have like a large number I mean even with like right now I think I forget how many I have I'd have to check but um even right now, looking at it, I mean, I'm you know, any uh, any infantry or any cavalry that I would charge me right now would probably get taken out. I mean, as of right now, I've been fighting pretty much bandits and looters and 
that's it. I mean, bandits have rifles, looters usually are just melee infantry, and those guys just, they don't even make it to the hill. I mean, literally, they just get taken out of range, most of them. I'm still trying to figure out the recruiting in this game. I know they have mercenary uh, camps where you can recruit a bunch of mercenaries. I know I've been, I have been able to recruit as you could, as you just saw the um, people at villages, but I know that goes away eventually. And I know you can recruit them at taverns. You know, see, like right there, I just bought powder. Pottery is good too, but the cheapest part uh, pottery is in the the. Crimean area where you can um like I forget which one but it's one of those like one of the uh, I don't remember which but it's one of the Crimean towns you can buy it like pottery for like ten dollars like literally ten dollars dude and you can <clears throat> excuse me sell them for like you know up to a hundred that's that's a decent amount of profit but like I said if you want want invest in big I say go with gunpowder. And villages buy pottery. But as you can see, I'm selling it for a hundred. A hundred dollars. The pottery. And here's the... I'm probably... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I usually visit taverns as well, as you can see right now. Just so I can hire some mercenaries. This allows for like everybody to run away, etc. See, I don't even mess with certain forts that don't give me 600 plus dollars for the gunpowder. Unless, like, I see something that I want to buy and I want to, you know, kind of reduce the cost on my uh, coin bag, I guess you can say, and then I'll sell, like, um, whatchamacallit, I'll sell the, the, the gunpowder, and I'll get, like, armor and stuff, yeah, the, the, this here was a pretty much uh, misclick, I uh, accidentally waited to um, see the prices. I have a tendency to look for like something better than mine if I can find it. If it's like um see like I said I bought the sword. I I have said the cost cuz the saber was obviously I consider that saber a little bit better than mine. But I usually after I buy even sometimes even after I buy stuff I'll double check make sure if it's better or not. If you know because sometimes, like, the stats are so minor that sometimes I'll go back to the old saber and just get rid of the other one. But usually, if Mountain Blade, um, games start off a little slow because you gotta make money, you gotta get armor, you gotta gain experience so you can start kicking ass. Um, but. Over uh, a certain period, you'll eventually it'll, it'll pick up, and you'll you know once you start getting the big battles, the sieges, etc. I think um, Kazikermon or whatever. I forget what that. Um, Crimean City has cheap salt. If you guys want to buy salt, they have some cheap salt. And then um, one of the Sweden Sweden places, um, Kingdom of Sweden, one of their towns has salt for sale. Because I know at the beginning of this place you'll have um, a quest if you're doing the village quests. If you want to do that for like extra money and experience, the the beginning quests. Um, 
one of the quests slash missions is they'll ask you to buy some salt. So if you're looking for salt, there is a Kaziker man or whatever the city is called, I forget, the town. And then there's one of the cities in Sweden has it. I forget which one. It might be one of the northern ones. Or it might be... Yeah, I can't recall. Anyhow. Also, fighting for Sweden is a good way to start because they are if I don't know if you guys uh, played uh, Mountain Blade Warband but they're like kind of like the Nords they have strong armored units they have strong infantry they have somewhat strong armored cavalry they I don't think they have any spear cavalry as like the Poland the 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 the, the Polish kingdom whatever um, Polish Kingdom is like, like kind of like Kingdom Swadia if you want to have like heavy cavalry with like spears and such. Um, the Moscovite Tartum, it's one of the, I think, harder factions to play. Um, and this is just for my, like I said, I don't have extensive experience here, but with, with, with whatever experience I have, and that's what I, I felt like, so this is um, just my opinion personally. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what was I saying? So, the uh, Moscovites are them. They're kind of like the Kingdom of Vagirs or whatever it's called. Um, so they have like average of everything, but they're not like I don't think they excel in anything as it seems. So I think it's one of the hardest factions. Well, not the hardest, but one of the harder factions to play. Um, the Crimean. Um, whatever, Crimean Kingdom, I know they have some decent infantry actually, the the Janissaries are pretty decent, and those, those armored, I forget what they're called, but they have like, chain armor uh, chain mail they have um, chain mail, so they're, they're fairly decently armored with, you know sword or whatever, so those are decent for sieges um, I don't think the Moscow has any armored like musketeers like that. So which kind of sucks, but the Kingdom of Sweden does, so there you go. Again, it's another benefit for sieges and such. Um, Cossacks, they have... What do they have? I think... I haven't really played with the Cossacks that much, so... Like, uh, as in seeing what units they have. I know I know they have Actually I don't even know what the hell they have personally because I know Moscow at Tardum Tardum has a um, or Tardum <laughs> whichever one you want to call it. I know they have um the Dawn Cossacks, which are pretty cool. They have spears but they're like light spear cavalry I think and I don't know I don't remember if they have any rifle dudes. They might can't recall, but um, I think they have boyar guards. That I think those guys have bows and arrows, and yeah, those are guys that are like fairly heavy cavalry. They're pretty good actually. They're sorry about the mic noise. I accidentally hit my my headset, so it made that little cracking sound. Um. I know they have fairly decent infantry, and I'm talking about this as I'm trying to make money. I know because you know you guys watching um, me trying to make money so I can get better equipment and such, and start hiring more mercenaries so I can start actually engaging in bigger battles or in certain battles. It's kind of boring, so I'm kind of going off on just the the the, ba the basic stuff in this game so the way you guys have a familiarity with it unless you already do and you might be actually better than me and might know more than me then hey more power to you then <laughs> you might be just watching this video for the hell of it to watch an, you know a scrub 
try to uh, succeed at with you know mountain blade with fire and sword. Anyhow, um, what was I saying? So anyhow, the boyars are fairly heavy cavalry, so they're decent for sieges. I know Moscow has good uh, cavalry units with heavy armor and a pistol. That's decent, but I think Sweden has the the, the heaviest armor, I believe. If I can recall correctly, I know Polish armor is fairly good, but I don't know who has the strongest armor. I still think it's the the Sweden has the strongest armor. Uh, oh, there's also I'm gonna be showing a a little trick. You know, once I find the two dudes I'm talking about. Well, actually, you know, I'll, I'll, since I mentioned it, why wait? So I'll, in the process, why I stop by towns and visit almost every tavern or in or whatever, is because I'm looking for two specific characters there. It's Carlson and something de something 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 some sp Spanish dude, uh, De Montoya or some I forget his goddamn name. Man, sorry, pardon my uh, my curse words. Um, I forget his name. Anyhow, they have so for a starting set, they have the heaviest armor and the helm that you can take off your hero guys that you hire and seriously you hire them like for 500 gold and the the armor and the helm like cost maybe 4000 for the armor and like 2000 for the helm if you try to buy it from the um, armor merchant so the benefit of that is like literally for 500 600 gold you get um a piece of armor which I usually take it off from them. I put it on myself, and then I'll just give them some cloth armor. You know, hey, they'll be fine. <laughs> you know, I'm more more important than those dudes. So that's a little trick I picked up. Um, actually, I picked up uh, that that chess piece. I picked up pretty much by myself, but then I was like looking into the game, like just reading stuff when I was first start playing it. Um, because I actually stumbled across Carlson first when I start playing this game the very first time, and I was like, oh, damn, you know, I'll hire you. I, I barely have any money, but I'll hire you. I need a hero. And I got him, and boom, I saw his chest. I just took it. But then I, I read there's another dude, the the Spaniard. So I read about him online, that he has a good helm that you can take. Actually, you know what? The Spaniard has a decent armor, too. It's like this leather armor. So if you have, like, a second favorite... So, I mean, obviously your character is going to be your favorite, but if you have, like, a second favorite hero, or, like, the or the top hero that you always like, that you find, you know, to your liking, you can always... Like, for me, the the, the, the Russian marksman dude, I like him. Because, obviously, I like marksmen in this game. Um, because, like I said, I'm... I like that one strategy you can put them. I mean, I don't know how extensively. I haven't really progressed too far in game, so my strategy might change over time. But he's a pretty, you know, so far the the marksman strategy works fairly well for me. So what I do is, um, I give that Fid 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 Fidot guy or whatever I forget his name. He's in my party right now. But um. I give him the the Spaniard's chest armor because it's fairly decent usually. Sometimes I'll Fatima or Fatima, the girl. I kind of like her too because she's like a infantry, um, like more like light infantry type. She like has throwing knives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh yeah, I do the farm quest so I can gain honor. That's you know for later on for I guess um, when I start building. Either as being a one of the, you know, working for one of the kingdoms as a lord or boyar or you know, a colonel, whichever one, whichever kingdom kingdom you choose. So yeah, I, I try to make honor because it'll be beneficial later on. Or not only that, I can always start up my own little kingdom. I haven't really been successful. I I, I don't have extensive experience on starting off my own nation, because I know in Mountain Blade uh, Warband you can pretty much start off your kingdom it'll start as your kingdom, you'll be red 
it'll be like you can name it whatever you want but here it will say you know whatever and then it will say um, faction whatever faction you took the town from and it will say faction, that faction name and then it will say rebels so you begin as a rebel and I don't know how to convert that into an actual you know kingdom or like, because you know, sometimes I want to. I'll be like, hey, you know what? Because I I like to take Smolensk, because it has a um, fairly decent profit for the town and has a lot of villages around it. So it is like probably one of the key towns because it has like I forget how many villages, like four or five villages around it. That if you take it, it'll be good profit. So what I'll do is I'll take it. You know, well, not not now. I'm not taking it now, but I'm eventually I want to do it. So if you take it and you have all these five towns around you, like little five villages, and those villages usually bring you like 2k profit. This is excluding Smolensk, which brings you like 5k profit. So literally, like each cycle, each I think I don't know how I forget how the cycles go. If they go by week or whatever, that's like five villages of 2k. That's about like 10k. I mean, of course you're gonna have expenses for. Uh, you know your t town expenses but you know if you upgrade those villagers I mean you're gonna be making a big chunk of money and then if if you're a rebel like let's say if you're a Polish rebel or um, depends what nation you took it from you can always like pledge alle uh, allegiance to a separate nation and you can literally have that town have the five villages around it or four villages I forget how <clears throat> how many and then what you can do is pretty much have protection from the nation you joined, whoever whoever the leader you ple pledged your allegiance to. Uh, I've done it on another game like that. I pretty much uh, had protection, and then I had out uh, the five towns, and I just making money. I got my armor. Actually, I got the the Polish wing uh, hussar, or however you pronounce that. Um, armor <clears throat> it was you know it was pretty badass I mean it was like one of the cheaper versions because it was like damage or something it was like battered or whatever but it still had a big chunk of armor on it and then I had the the boyar helm so it was, it was pretty cool as you can see I have always this tendency to check the armor because I want to buy something because I want to I want to improve my armor as soon as possible but then I have second thoughts. I'm like, okay, why should I buy this when I'm going to get the upgrade eventually? But I always have this tendency because it's sometimes, you know, I get attacked by a stronger force. I mean, usually once you have like 20 mercs working for you, usually majority of the groups will run away from you. It'll be rare when a, a group of like brigands or bandits or rebels will attack you. But sometimes when, you know, you go into a village and then it's taken over by like 60 bandits. And if you don't have good armor you're pretty much screwed because you're gonna if you're gonna die and you're you don't have that many mercenaries let's say you even have 20 mercenaries and they all die guess what you're gonna be taking prisoners and you're gonna prisoner and then you're gonna lose some of your goods and it just you know and some of your armor maybe your weapon or whatever and that just it sucks because then you pretty much have to after you escape if you do escape you'll have to start you know collecting money again to try to get new you know, new upgrades or not upgrades, but new new pieces. Anyhow, I think that's pretty much almost the end of my little spiel. As I'm pretty much ignoring what's going on in the game, and I'm just talking about this. But you know, you guys you guys can tell that I'm trying to just pretty much turn around a profit, do a few. Um, missions here and there that I pick up from farmers at, you know, taverns because, you know, obviously you want to kill the bandits inside a village because it will give you it will, you know, net XP and then it will also net um, uh, what do you call it? Honor. And then occasionally you'll get lucky like that. <laughs> and then you'll have some, like, villagers under attack by, um, some dudes and you'll go help them or like the what do you call it yeah whatever you guys saw the, the name 
but uh, deserters are fun to fight against because deserters sometimes have pretty good stuff like they'll have like a strong unit maybe or two I mean they might take out a good chunk of your guys but you might pick up some good loot from them especially if your looting is um, higher than what I have but you'll, you might get some good stuff I think these guys are actually the Donk Cossacks by looking at their armor and such so as you can see they're like light cavalry with guns and spears so they they are very versatile I mean literally if need be they can um, do like a polearm charge against certain infantry like let's say even against the marksman if they hit him from the side and then they can you know pull out their gun and maybe take out a horse of a like if they're being you know attacked by other cavalry they can take out the horse or the you know depending on the cavalry unit or you know I mean they even have sabers for close combat so they're like a little mix of everything so they're decent and that's what I usually play as you know as in I mean not the Don Cossack but I play as like this heavy um, cavalry unit that can be both ranged and if need be in melee or melee melee however you want to pronounce it you know potato potato tomato tomato um, so yeah my pronunciation sometimes sucks so you guys <laughs> can correct me on that if you guys want um, you know by spelling it out phonetically obviously because you can't put voice recordings into comments at least not that I'm aware of so anyways that's what I usually play as because then it's good for sieges and stuff like castle I mean not castle like town sieges and stuff if you have versatility like that heavy armor range and, and melee or melee or whatever you want to call it you know close combat close quarter combat whatever you want to call it um, victory is mine obviously because I kick ass I got two wounded guys my allies lost quite a bit but hey at least I got some stuff what was I gonna say oh, pardon me totally forgot you know what I guess that'll be for another episode